You're on. No, I'm not. This is your meeting. How do I flip it? No. You can flip, you can flip it like that, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to week five of the Fuel for Life Challenge. We have Jorge, Lindy, and Mike. And Mike here with us. Um, so I guess we can start with uh, how, do you, uh, how do you guys feel about this week and how it went? I felt good because when I weighed in, it wasn't the weight that Mike told me that I was losing uh, fat, body fat. Yeah, yes. Which is there what I go. was going for. Yeah, so you probably gained some muscle too. You know, I didn't feel that way, but apparently I may have. You know, I feel stronger. I definitely feel stronger. I think I look more cut, you know, and I kind of show my husband. All right. when I do that. Did he get scared a little bit? I'm always saying, honey, I think I need a band-aid. I gotta cut. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta cut. <laughs> okay. How do you feel? Um, I, I keep my level the, in the way. It's, it's not too bad. So, um, I feel better. I, I feel more strong. I feel more strong the, uh, three, three, four weeks ago. I feel better. That's good. How's, how's the food going? Uh, the food going, I, I'm trying to eat better. Probably no eat 100% better, but I, I, feel, I, I eat better. Okay. Um, I guess I should say that after Saturday, so Saturday I had a piece of cake. Yeah, with the, <laughs> um, I want to call it a sliver, but that might be different from other people's slivers. Could you see through it? <laughs> well, it was white cake. <laughs> <laughs> I think a sliver you can see through. <laughs> um, but that was here after the uh, the competition we did on, on Saturday, um, which Mr. Yeah, it, it, second it, place. It, it's hard. It, it's hard like the no eat cake because the cake tastes, tastes good. And the food is, is because it's a problem. When you got the food, a lot of choices, eat, 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 it's a... Wow. But most of those choices were good. Yeah, were good the, the choices, choices is good. Only yeah. the things is a lot, a lot of food. Yeah, so we had brisket, yeah. we had and the pulled brisket pork. Is good and, and the, the food is pretty good. Yeah. Only it's, it's a lot of food. That's a big cake, though. Yeah, and the big cake, too. Uh, it's it's a nice Andy, cake. Andy revealed to me that he had one beer Saturday. Ah, uh, me too. Oh, okay. Me so too. You, didn't, you hadn't told us <laughs> that part. <laughs> okay, but overall, I mean, overall, Maybe before, before, if you weren't in the six-week program, you would have had three beers, and Andy might have had two or three or something. But he, oh, okay. he was mindful. He 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 had a beer. He was mindful of it, and that's what it's all about. You know, everything in moderation. Oh, in the night, son, drink something. Uh, I I don't know what the name. What's the name? Fireball. Yeah. Fireball. <laughs> I, eat, I I drink maybe a couple of fireballs, and I don't know. Maybe it's, it's a lot of sugar. So next time you and I are together, yeah. and there's fireballs like yeah. that. Let's let's commit to maybe two. Yeah, maybe better. Two, two, two shots, two, yeah. two shots each. That's plenty. That's plenty. Yeah, I could have stopped there and I yeah. would have felt. Learning something new about Mike tonight. I didn't know you liked Fireball. Oh, I didn't say I did. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I definitely. I mean, they brought a big bucket. I won't say who. It was Gabrielle and, and, and uh, Walter, though, in case you were wondering. <laughs> uh, they brought a big bucket and had these little Fireball shooters, little things, and Jorge. You know, we were being festive, so we had one. Jorge was being even more festive, so we had another one. And then I think I think you were the one that was egging on the third one too. So that's how I recall. Probably yeah. So is it sweet? Is that what you're worried about? It's the uh, calories? No, it's it's empty calories. It's just alcohol. How does yeah. that compare to, let's say, a soda? Well, soda has sugar, and sugar will kill you. And soda is definitely addicting. Alcohol can destroy your whole life and your family's life too. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter okay. of everything in moderation is okay. Mm -hmm. But um, if you drink too many sodas, it's like that's one of the main problems with America today. Mm -hmm. People drinking too many sodas, eat too much ketchup and drink too many sodas, and have too many French fries and all the stuff that spikes your blood sugar. Um, ethanol is not particularly good for you either. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But we didn't have fireballs last night and we won't be having them tonight. So. No, no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, have y'all read any of the articles that were sent out this week yet? I did. What was the first one again? Um, I didn't. I saw the sleep one today, but I didn't read it. But the previous one, I started that, and I already forgot it. I'm trying to think. I think last Wednesday we got the gut health 
one. Were y'all able to read that one? There's one about sugar, one about gut health, and then the um, the happy chemicals, happy brain chemicals. I think it's a happy brain chemicals. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good one. It's really, really interesting. So we should talk about that for a second. Did you get to read it? You have a chance to read it? I think I started it. I'm trying to remember. It's pretty. <clears throat> it's it's three or four pages, so it's a little longer than most of them. I read one thing and it leads me to Google something else and then I go off and I forget what it was that I where I got the information originally. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Um, so the, it talks about the four brain chemicals that are, um, they call them the happy chemicals because they generally make people feel uplifted in one way or another when they're firing right. Dopamine is one, everybody's heard of dopamine. And interestingly, sugar gives you a dopamine hit. And that's the bad kind of dopamine rush. And, and uh, video games give you a dopamine hit. And that, that, that kind of stuff, um, it's, it's like just like a bad drug like cocaine or something. It gives you a stimulus that feels great and makes you feel good for a period of time. And then you want to do it again. And then you want to do it again and again and again. So if you can find a way to get your, hope, your dopamine to be stimulated in a healthy way, then you're money ahead. You're feeling this happy chemical. It's a feeling of being... Um, like you, you, you achieved a goal, like you got something done. Like today, if you were trying to hit five rounds mm -hmm. and you hit five point five plus three or something, then mm -hmm. you, you get that little dopamine hit. Uh, CrossFit is definitely full of them, and um, and those those are the good kind. But the other kinds are the ones that you you got to be mind, more mindful of. So anyway, dopamine is very cool, um, but it can it can be overstimulated too. Um, Oxytocin was the second one, and that's one that uh, people experience when, if I were to reach over to Christine right now and give her a big hug, there would be an initial shock, <laughs> but then you'd have this feeling of, this, this oxytocin feeling of being warm and cuddly and, and accepted and, and loved and nurtured, and it's like we all felt and craved when we were babies. That's the kind of stuff that was firing when we were babies. Um, then serotonin is the third one, and uh, that's one where if you're if you're in a if you're in front of a room full of people, you're giving a presentation for work, and you say something that you're hoping people are stimulated by in some way, whether it's laughing or sitting, you know, leaning into it or whatever, and it works, you get a little hit of serotonin. So that's the the acceptance, the kind of a group acceptance kind of thing. And uh, I guess a comedian lives on that, that sort of thing, where they, they're, they're saying something, they hope it gets a laugh, and it gets a laugh, and, and that's, their, that's their mad rush. And then the last one is endorphins, which we can all get. If you are power walking hard enough on a hot, steamy day, and you're getting into a zone, kind of, there's some of that chemistry going on. Where it's actually, it's, it's like a, it's almost a deadening um, effect where it, it, it neutralizes the stresses on your body so that you can survive them. Um, on top of all of that, what I found to be the most interesting was that um, the list of triggers for those different four chemicals, it reads like what we've been talking about for five solid weeks in this program and we, what we talk about in CrossFit all the time. Um, exercise triggers, stimulates those chemicals, as we know. Um, high intensity exercise stimulates those chemicals, and that's the world we live in now. There's all kinds of great ways in nutrition world and uh, micronutrient world to get the nutrients that you, that you need to stimulate those chemistries. Rest, recovery, sleep, um, cold showers, sunshine, all the things that make you feel good in the moment, not the cold shower part, but the other ones, <laughs> <laughs> those are all stimulants of happy chemicals. And if, we, if, if you read through that and kind of put those pieces together, it'll give you more motivation to maybe take a yoga class or, or find some way to meditate or things like that, because those things all work. Um, just don't tell your kids about the video game part. Mm -hmm. But everything else really is, is good and healthy stuff. So anyway, that's I why. Did, that's I was going to say, I did notice um, this week I started reading again before going to bed, like just um, fiction novels or, you know, that kind of thing. And I was able to actually fall asleep faster each night this week 
Um, so I thought that was a more calming way instead of, you know, TV or playing on my phone or even reading on my phone. You know, I was reading an actual book. So I thought that that um, helped me this week. For sure, for sure. And the, the, the reason we put sleep modules into this program is that there's some really good stuff there. Um, what do they call it? The, not the sleep environment, but the creating the, creating the atmosphere that best facilitates a good, you know, going to sleep process. And first and foremost, you get all the electro, you get all the electrons out of your bedroom. So, and then there's things about being exposed to blue light, uh, too close to bedtime. Definitely eating too close to bedtime is, is a sleep disruptor for sure. Um, and especially eating something that spikes your blood sugar. Like if I have one slice too many of pizza, unless it's cauliflower crust, then I toss and turn all night because I've over I've overeaten. I'm, I'm getting a blood sugar rush. Same thing with alcohol. I will say that I will say maybe fireballs are different because I slept <laughs> like a rock <laughs> when I got. Uh, when I what, got. what is the true my? Uh, when we take out all the shoes, take out all the socks, and we walk in with in the dirt. What's the in, the in the dirt? In the dirt, yeah. Not in the concrete, in, in the dirt. So what's the question? Yeah, we said, uh, suppose we leave the, the energies to the dirt, to the body, or leave, I, I don't know, something positive. Yeah, it's kind of like a, uh, about absorbing, like yeah, absorbing absorbing the earth and and mm -hmm. feeling with nature. So you mean when you stuff. walk outside? Yeah, because okay. sometimes yeah. me and Jenny take out the stuff and we're walking outside with the, walking in the dark, no, yeah. no shoes, no nothing, and leave the uh, energies. There's a, I, I've heard about that, read about that before. Yeah. I, I haven't been barefoot in a long time outside. But yeah. we used to do it all the time when we were kids. And we yeah, were laying in the grass and just and, and, the and we, yeah. we were generally, on average, happier when we were kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and another thing is in the morning, when the frost lines, the, the, the sunshine in the morning, you take like this or sit and wait for the sunshine and you face ma uh, making a lot of vitamin A day, I think so. Yeah. 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 The, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, not by the noon, it's only just in the morning. Yeah. Just in the morning? Yeah, just midday? in the morning. I've, no. heard, I've heard that it's, well, because of the way melatonin, mm -hmm. melatonin cycles through your body, it's better to do it in the morning. For yeah, sure. it's better in the morning. Yeah. I'm walking in the morning, so. I'm yeah. Running, yeah. So. yeah, and now the daylight savings time has met you halfway. Yes. Yes. You've got some good sunlight. Yeah, not so much round right now. It's hard to believe it's, uh, well, it's not even 8 o'clock yet. It's pitch black outside. Well, there are depressions related to that in, mm -hmm. in, in the northern countries and whatnot, so. And that's a real thing too. So those things are all just ways to floss your body uh, to be healthy. And uh, you know, that's why we have them in this program when we're talking about them. Because they are instrumental. It's not just about, and that's why we had the, Ren, the Chatterjee interview, because he talks about all the other things besides working out and besides nutrition and how important these things are. So what do you want to talk about, Coach? <laughs> um, well, I actually made some um, kind of changes to what I was doing with my food this week in nutrition. Um, I kind of took a little bit more of the starchy carbs out, added a little more vegetable. Um, and I'm feeling like this is kind of only day three of, of kind of morphing that a little bit, but I feel a little drained. I feel a little less energy, but I don't feel sluggish. So it's kind of a weird in between. Uh, right now because I'm I can tell from my workouts that I'm not sluggish and I'm keeping up and with that but I'm kind of hitting this lull in um, in the afternoon so I don't know if there's you know something else I should tweak a little bit like maybe I need to change my snack time a little bit to kind of get me over that little that tired hump um, maybe just add um, something like a fruit element yeah to your snack for your car part I mean I wouldn't overdo that but Strawberries or blueberries or something. Yeah. Apple. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds yeah. interesting. And 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 it's like when people go on like the remember the Atkins diet, mm -hmm. it was super low carb. They they went into shock. Did you know anybody that ever did that? The Atkins diet. Does that ring a bell? Have you ever heard? Oh, of I've that? heard of it. Yeah. yeah. So I knew some people that did it, and they would eat cheese and mm -hmm. cheese like crazy all day. And uh, 
but they, they would go through a multi-week process where they'd really crash until their bodies got used to processing other um, sources into energy besides just starchy carbs. Yeah, because your body gets used to whatever you do regularly, you know, whatever you do on a consistent basis, your body gets used to that being the main mode and, um, and it, loses, it loses its ability to do other things. So that's why we talk about, you know, maybe doing a little bit of intermittent fasting and maybe doing a little bit of, you know, back, backing off of carbs or, you know, reducing the total carb content, eating more fats, healthy fats, because um, it's training your body to, to do that process, that ketogenesis process where you're, you're actually taking the fat molecule and re reducing it to energy. That's why you saw the changes you saw, because you were you were regaining that that uh, metabolic pathway. I hope so. This week I did um, work has just been hectic mm -hmm. for the last whatever since this new job. I feel like I work anywhere from 12, 16 hours a day, just yeah. nonstop. I literally take a break to make meals for the kids, mm -hmm. maybe get them ready for bed or what have you, and then I'll sleep maybe six hours a night or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, coming to CrossFit, that is my break from work. Mm -hmm. Cooking meals is my break from work. So it's just been so stressful. I didn't know if I was eating right. I think about what I eat, which is a lot different from what I did before. Mm -hmm. But I will skip meals or I will intermittent fast just because I won't remember to eat until about one or two. So this week I went back to prepping meals. So at one or two when I'm, oh my gosh, it's way late for lunch. I got to eat now. I can grab that. So, yeah. and when I was posting pictures the first week, I felt the pressure to cook and prep. So you might find me posting pictures because then I feel like I've got to do it so I can post it. Then I know I'm eating right as well. Yeah, it's good. I'm looking every day for people to post. Okay, and I will, yeah. <laughs> and to make snacks because when I don't, I don't snack either. I don't think I eat enough. Yeah, and you were such a star when we started this. I, I, I do, I just, yeah, I'll post it again. I just I thought need, you didn't want us to post that. Oh yeah, like I need some thing. recipes, I need some oh. ideas. I'm feeling very uncreative because I'm full of work stuff too, and I just, yeah. I'm like, somebody show me what to make. I got a copycat <laughs> chipotle that I marinate the chicken breast, have my husband grill it, and that is the protein that goes with the sweet, I mean, sweet potatoes is such a big thing now, right? So I try to get sweet potatoes in every week with bok choy or whatever, but just simple stuff. But, um... Well, we're entering into the holiday se the, the yeah. fall season, and that kind of stuff is so good. Yeah. And then you can get in the soups and stuff that are really good, too. Tracy just made a big uh, chicken and vegetable soup last week, and uh, it was soup and half a sandwich for mm -hmm. lunch every day, which is fantastic. Recipe. You'll have to, yeah, you'll have to let me know about some bok choy yeah. uh, stuff because my husband loves bok choy and he's like, why don't you ever make, you know, the only time I ever make it is if I kind of saute it. Yeah. That's yeah. about all I do with that. Um, and Tracy makes this really good cereal. Well, you've been talking about the cereal, <laughs> Mike. What? Yes, we've been waiting for that sample. Yeah, for five we weeks. weeks. Five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So I just brought enough to everybody to try a handful, and yes. you can use this if you want to keep I your hand clean. My hands, are, my hands are dirty. Yeah. yeah. So just, a just, just enough to... Just to wet our palate here. Oh, it even looks how nice. Thank you. That's good. This is like eating the best cookie ever. Thank you. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, we're, we can mm. stop filming now. Okay. <laughs>